The following is a public service announcement. Election day is near. Go to the polls and vote. Vote for the Kennedy of your choice, but vote. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Emily. So recently, I was out shopping for records, and I spotted one that I knew we had in our collection. So I purchased it because I wanted to listen to it. But that is the extent of my knowledge on this album, and I knew that you would be the perfect person to ask about more details on it. Can you give me some? Sure. This is one of my favorites. This is the first family comedy album featuring the Kennedy impersonation of Von Meter. And this really is the crown jewel of Kennedy pop culture. It was released in November of 1962. Too. And by today's standards, it's a very gentle, loving parody. Uh, it kind of just pokes fun at Kennedy's accent, the athleticism of the family, and the presence of children in the White House. Uh, to put it mildly, this was a smash hit. Uh, sold seven and a half million copies and was the fastest selling record in history up to that time. Ended up spending 12 weeks on the Billboard charts at number one. Wow. Um, so what did, did the president know about this and what did he think of it? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, this won Grammy for Album of the Year in 1963. Very, very popular. Kennedy was asked about this record at a news conference where he said he felt that Von Meter sounded more like his brother Teddy. <laughs> and it was uh, rumored that Kennedy bought 100 copies of The First Family to give out at Christmas 1962. So he was certainly aware of it and was very good-natured about it. Well, it's nice that he didn't take himself too seriously. Yeah, you know, the thing about an album like this, when, when anything in popular culture becomes a runaway success, it's not long before you have imitators trying to cash in on something's popularity, and that was certainly the case for the first family. Uh, as you mentioned, there are millions of these out there, so you can still find them and in record shops today. Uh, we have in our collection kind of an unofficial follow-up that is much harder to find today. Very few people have actually heard of this. It's called the President Strikes Back. Okay. Uh, this was released very soon after the first family, late 62, early 63, and basically it is this weird meta response to the success of the first family. In it, you have President Kennedy waking up his cabinet in the middle of the night to say he is going to do his own comedy album, <laughs> that his impersonation of himself is better than Von Meter. It's, it's all fake but it's a really interesting lens through which to view the Kennedys' place in pop culture in the early uh, 1960s. In, in the record, you know, the president just goes through the process of making his own album. Uh, he hires a talent agent, he preps for a TV commercial, tries to sell the album to the United Nations. <laughs> uh, my favorite part, though, is uh, a televised address he makes to the nation about uh, a dire crisis <laughs> where he asks the U.S. Army to uh, create an embargo around record stores everywhere until <laughs> copies of the first family are removed. This is just a couple of months after the Cuban <laughs> Missile Crisis, so really interesting that we're having a parody of it uh, so soon thereafter, but that's The President Strikes Back. <laughs> well, I, honestly, I, I'm, and I might not be the only one, but The President Strikes Back gives me Star Wars vibes. Do you think that there uh, is any like influence or connection there? Well, you know, this, this album uh, came out in like 62, and, and you have The Empire Strikes Back in 1980. I suppose it's possible that a young George Lucas uh, picked up this record at his local store and, and somehow the title stuck in his, uh, stuck in his <laughs> brain for a couple decades. I guess, I guess we'll never know about that. Um, Kennedy's uh, impersonation on this record was done by a comedian named Mark London who actually went on to be a comedy writer for The Muppet Show and Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. And this whole album was written and conceived by a guy named Ron Clark. And he went on to partner with Mel Brooks on a number of his popular comedies. So these guys involved in this record went on to have prosperous careers, um, which is really more than you can say for poor Vaughn Meter. I was wondering why I've never heard of him. Yeah, after the assassination, uh, his career was effectively over. He was so closely tied to his impersonation of President Kennedy. He struggled in the entertainment business for decades. He was homeless at one time, and he passed away in near obscurity 
in 2004, which is kind of a sad legacy for the first family. But today we're able to listen to these albums and get a sense of what it was like in that Camelot era of the early 1960s. These would have been very inappropriate to sell or play in the years after the assassination, but, uh, but as you say, they're, they're still out there. Well, at least this one is, uh, and so we can still enjoy Vaughn Meter and the First Family today.